Now, why on earth, why on earth have we got uh, babies in the programme tonight? You may well ask. All will be revealed a little later. We try to bring you, of course, new, entertaining and exotic TV. And I think The James Whale Show manages to do all that. So tonight, a plethora, a plethora of entertainment. So please, without more ado, ladies and gentlemen, here late night on television on ITV, Q Titles! Carry on. Welcome to the programme, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. Lovely to have your company tonight. And before we go any further, thank you for the letters. Uh, and I thought we really must try and include a couple of letters on the programme, except some of them you just can't read. Uh, here's uh, a letter from Jane from Poulton La Fylde. I am reading this one. I like the address. And it says, uh, James, well done on having these very topical and worthwhile issues included on your show. And what a nice way to talk about cookies. Thank you very much indeed. That comes from Jane. And uh, here's another one from uh, Shelton Newark near Nottinghamshire and this comes from uh, Cheerio for now thank you very much indeed James and that's wonderful Jennifer Bailey wrote into us uh, and says once again you are to be congratulated that's all we need out of that one I think and uh, well thank you and Leon Farrow who wrote to us from uh, WC1N said uh, please feel free to quote this letter with my name but do not give my address and he lives at uh, to, well anyway fine okay thank you very much indeed and don't forget if you'd like to write to us, the address is over there. And we would love to hear from you. So if there's anything you'd like to talk to us about, that's the address. The James Whale Show, care of MMTV, 5 to 7 Carnaby Street, London, W1, blah, 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 blah. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Cookie! <laughs> have to hog all this the yours, yes. what this is my bit it's your bit it might oh, be so your bit. bit yes now what do you tell everybody i'm not nasty to you you but you know it's really horrible to me oh don't tell them you're that really, because they believe you are it. really i've got to tell the truth joe you say tell the truth <laughs> okay we'll we get oh, on with gorgeous. it now fine thanks very much you? right okay act. uh karen hulse where are you you're touching me again no, karen no, hulse from cannock in staffordshire uh, won a holiday uh, a couple of weeks ago and she's off on her travels to the Mediterranean all the Canaries now your chance to win here on the James Whale show a holiday for two people if that was for two people I'm sorry about that it's okay uh, if you have nobody to to go with please, no, honestly please if you've got a ladder down the inside That's of your ladder, it's a seat. all right okay Double if you person. have nobody to go with then I mean she's always looking for a free holiday aren't she? I am. Yeah. yeah so who knows now you can get seven nights for two people and uh, you can be either in the Canaries or the Mediterranean the choice is yours all you have to do though is go to your phones now and you can phone us any time until midnight on Sunday and answer this one simple question Simon our researcher is ill this week has he got a turkey pox? Turkey pox? Yes. Cocoa pox? G yeah. Or, or chicken pox? Who told you to do that? This I bet that was Mansfield. Bit. Oh, okay, fine. Right, so, uh, has he got a turkey pox, B cocoa pox, or C chicken, chicken pox? pox? Yeah, that's a difficult one. Right, okay, the phone lines are open right. until midnight on Sunday. The number to ring us on now is 0891 48 49 50. Thank you. Good, thank you very much indeed. Right, on we go. Our first guest on the programme tonight is a man who has, uh, I think, been in the news more than anybody else. A lot of the time he'd rather not have been in the news. Please, would you welcome tonight to the James Whale Show, Mr Craig Charles! <laughs> Come and have a 
chair over here. Oh. Well, 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 listen, first, the first thing I have to say is the tailoring inside is very nice. I wish I could say the same, but it looks no, like I'm sorry, I'm somewhere sorry. in the West End is a cortina you, without sea covers. You, you think so? <laughs> Oh, well, I, thought, nice. I thought it was the height of fashion, but this is this is nice. Did you get this? You didn't get this inside, did you? No, no, no. no it's no. a machino. Is it really? It's a machino. Oh my golly, my golly! How are you feeling now? Um, stressed out a bit, but getting back to normal. You know, sort of. Um, I've got a lot off my chest. So. How? I mean, I, I heard you say at the beginning of the week that, that you had to do a lot of crying, you had to do a lot of shouting, mm. uh, you had to talk about this a lot. Yeah. To to really get it out of your system. Mm. I wondered how you felt about other people you met while you were in there who are on remand, who feel the same way and don't get the chance to do this. I think that the remand system itself is, is, is disgusting. I mean, we live in a country where you're supposed to be innocent and still proven guilty. So why would you be sending innocent men to jail in the first place, you know? I mean, unless they've got <clears throat> a reputation of um, not turning up for court or, uh, you know, not uh, uh, adhering to their mm. bail conditions. Then a bail is an automatic right of, of all people, you know? You, you, you should have a right to bail. Why didn't you get bail? Well, they kept saying... At first, uh, the first reasoning was I would interfere with the witness. Um, really? That was, that's what they said. And, um, but the, they'd moved the witness from her home address uh, a, a day after these allegations were made, so... But, you see, I mean, as well as being a very well-known personality, which means, obviously, that people are going to follow you around and everything else, that, that's one of the reasons I would have thought you were less likely to interfere with a witness than anyone else. I know, but then they started saying I'd abscond as well. So, um, they, they, they refused me bail, saying I'd run away, I'd hire a private plane and uh, flee the country. Oh, and I was just saying, get me to court, I want to put, you know, I want to clear my name, I want to get my side of the story across. It seems from, from, from reports of the case and everything that we've read that, that everything was done wrong. There was no uh, medical examination of the woman for 30 hours. So everything that could have gone wrong as far as the prosecution was concerned did go wrong. And still they shut you away. I mean, I wonder whether you should have got hold of your solicitor and said, this is not on, what are you doing? Well, my solicitor was, you know, was trying his best to get me out. Uh, the, the actual... When the police came round to my house and said, like, you know, you're under arrest for rape, I mean, after I stopped looking for Jerry, Jeremy Beadle and started, like, taking this a bit more seriously, I said, just get me to a doctor. <laughs> I mean, you know, take any, any sample you want, and they take pubic hair, saliva, blood, urine, um, spermal swabs, and, and I gave them all the samples, the samples they could, saying, you know, they anything you want, just uh, clear my name. And um, I thought they'd go and, you know, take those samples away, get them tested, and when they came back negative, they'd say, oh, sorry about that, Mr. Scholes, I've uh, got a bit of a fraggle here. But um, they didn't. They took the samples and threw me in jail, and I had to wait three and a half months before the forensics were back, and they realised that all the forensics were negative, and then they decided, that, OK, it's been committed to trial, we'll give them a bit of bail. When you were in the van being taken to the prison for the first time, then I presume that you suddenly realised this is not a joke. Yeah. What was going through your mind when you were being driven there? Well, um, I just kind of hated the, uh, the newsreader on Capital Radio because I'm in, the, I'm in this sweat box and they've got the Capital Radio on full blast and it's like, Craig Charles, uh, I'll go accuse the rape when a romantic in custody at South West Manchester. I was like, oh, I was, I, I was devastated, devastated. When you got there, that, they, you'll have to write and tell them about that. Mm. Um, <clears throat> perhaps they can get new newsreaders. When you got there, mm. they, uh, you have to strip. Oh, you yeah. have to go through a very, very intimate body search. Oh, okay, there's like there's two uh, uh, shoe uh, shoes painted on the floor, and you've mm. got to put your feet in the shoes, and you bend over, and um, <clears throat> well, they, yes, and okay, they start yes, looking up yeah. everywhere. You know. Yeah. Oh. When you got into the cell, I mean, what were they, we've all seen the films, haven't we? I mean, everybody's seen these films where you, you, you're flung into the cell with this great big bloke, oh. uh, and he starts bouncing you around. You're my toy boy, um, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, we've all. That must have been going through your mind. It was, you know. It was. <laughs> what happened? Well, I was, I was fortunate enough to be able to share a cell at first with my co-defendant, you know. Mm. But um, after we came back for one of our bail applications we'd been refused, they split us up, and I arrived in a four-up cell. That's four people in a cell that was built for one person in the 1800s. And this guy goes, all right, Craig, he says, he says, all right, mate, we know you didn't do it. Here's your bed. Sort it out. No-one's going to give you any... Uh, No-one's going to give you a clamp or nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't mind. He said, I've been here 18 months on remand. And I went, 18 months? What for? He goes, oh, murder. <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I said, so, uh, so you know, uh, what happened? He goes, oh, I smothered him with a pillar. So you didn't sleep that night? I didn't sleep no. for three nights <laughs> until I plucked up the courage to ask for a cell change. You know, it was like, oh... What about the toiletry uh, requirements? I've heard you talk about this a lot. Mm. And people tend, even now, not to think, you know, when you're on remand, you're not guilty. You're just there because they consider that uh, 
some may think very strangely, that you're a danger to the public or yourself or whatever, but you're still put into some of the worst cells that we have, even well, now. Wandsworth Prison is a really draconian sort of establishment, and um, there's no sort of facilities in the cells or anything like that, so you're locked up 23 hours a day with, like, three other men, and um, you've all got to defecate in the bucket and urinate in the bucket, you know? Not at and the same time. Not at the same no. time, not at the same time. But at the height Do of the summer as well, you know? But you can't empty it until, like, until slop-out time, oh. so you've got to live in the same room with these things, you know? So in the end, you start defecating in, 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 uh, in bin bags and throwing them out the window, because um, oh. it's true, you throw them out the window of the cell and there's a guy with a wheelbarrow next morning who's got the worst job in jail. <laughs> I mean, actually, jail is the only place where you can get promoted to be a shithouse cleaner. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, at least it got me out of the cell, because at first I was in, like, 23-hour bang-up, it's called. I was locked up in a cell for 23 hours a day. You see, having said this now on television a number of times, perhaps people would think this is a great deterrent, perhaps the crime rate's going to go down. Does it, it doesn't seem to work as a deterrent to quite a few people who seem to go back again and again. It makes me wonder, in a way, you know, why they do put so many people in jail on remand. I mean, it, it, it makes you wonder if it's got something to do with the privatisation of jails. You know, they're going to privatise them, mm. and if it's nice to see that the remand wings are always full so that people might come in and, and um, you know, bid we're, for them. We're going to talk a little later with uh, Gary, who's going to come up here and join us, about the, the legal business. Sorry, I wanted to ask you, a lot of people might want to ask you, is why you decided to suddenly go and sell your story, and I think part two is coming up this week, to the Sunday newspapers. Well, at the end of the day, um, they were going to write the story. Because a horrific story. I yeah, must have. but they were going to write the story anyway. Mm. So I might as well have uh, uh, got in there and, and, and sort of um, put my side of the story across, rather than the smear and the innuendo that had been happening in court. You know, I mean, this was like a form of legalised libel. It was like she, mm. this woman stood on the witness box and started saying, just addressing the jury, go, remember the jury, this man is evil. And forget the fact that there was zero evidence in this case. Zero evidence. She just kept, you know, li libeling me and de defaming me. And, um, cos, of course, you know, the press are there to print it. The saddest thing I, I thought, and not a lot of people may know, that, that you, you, you've got a family, you've got a young son, mm. And actually, you had to phone him, well, you didn't have to, but you phoned him from prison yourself. Yeah. Can you remember that? Yeah, it's, it's probably the, that's probably the, the worst. That's probably the worst moment of my life so far. Just like, because uh, my son knew I was in jail. Yeah. He was getting stick at school, you know, he was only six. And it's like, um, you know, the nature of these allegations are disgusting. I kept thinking people think I'm a pervert, people think I'm off my head. And um, so I phoned him today. It's like, Daddy, you're in jail. It's like, I, then you try to start trying to explain that you're not really in jail. You're in a remand centre, and only uh, people who are guilty go to jail. But um, how do you, I, what would you say? How do you explain it to a six-year-old? What did you say boy? to him when when you first met him after you came out? Um, after you were innocent. I haven't seen him yet. I phoned him up. It was the first phone call I made soon as I got out of jail. I said, I said, Jack, I'm out. I'm out. It's all it's all over. And he goes, I know. So I get him for the weekend. Great. We'll talk to you later, ladies and gentlemen. For the moment, Mr. Craig Charles. <laughs> And uh, this is, can you, uh, sorry, uh, Craig, could you, could you just read this name out? I thought, you know, just... Um, Jason just, Mariano one. Kuchak. Beautiful. And Sun in the Rain. <laughs> the sun and the rain. And you make a rainbow. Picture of love, ooh, a painting wherever you go. See high above, ooh, I'm in love because you're the girl, the girl dreams I made of. Colors, I see. Whenever you're near me, I still don't believe how beautiful love can be. Clouds drifting by your face in the sky. I know you're the girl, the girl dreams I made of. When life is dreary, I just close my eyes. Feeling surrounds me. I realize that you're here, here by my side. The sun and the rain, and you make my rainbow a picture of love, a painting wherever you go. See high above, ooh, I'm in love because you're the girl. Colors I 
Great, thank you, Jason, and uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll have some more a little later. Uh, Baz over there was Baz over there was was he was sent, weren't you, Baz? I mean, you were completely sent, <laughs> completely sent. <laughs> anyway, before <laughs> I'm here, James is here, James is here, right? Okay. Now, I'm sorry, darling, about that, uh, Michael. I mean, sorry. Uh, right. Uh, Keith's t-shirt. Well, that's quite interesting. This because I thought this is quite quite sort of. Uh, what does Jerry think of this? What do you think? OK, take, take this one. There we are. Nick Leeson for Chancellor. What do you think? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> anyone. Look, do you change well, shoes? Anyone okay, who fine. wears shoes We've like got to get on. We've got, we've got to... Uh, they're they're well, Ken Clark's shoes. We've got to get on with this. These are not Kenneth Clark's shoes. Simon, our researcher, is ill this week. Has he got A, turkey pox, B, cocoa pox, or C, chicken pox? You could win... A holiday for one week, seven nights for two people in the Mediterranean or the Canaries. Your choice. Ring us now on 0891 48 49 50 and join us again in part two. Welcome back to the James Whale Show. And is that any way for a Tory MP to behave? But thank you very Better much. Better than some. Better, Better than, than some. some. Better than Better some. Better than some. Okay, we'll be talking about babies very soon. Did you see that programme the other night, <laughs> Beyond Belief? Yes, and I got it all right. Oh, you did? Yeah. And I wanted to demonstrate my superhuman uh, extra... Um, per per uh, whatever. For instance, <laughs> for instance, if I think of a number now between one and three... See if you think of the same number as me. Between one and three, now. I'm transmitting that number now. Can you... You're right, two. Yes, OK. Now, I'm going to hold up some... Here to the audience. I'm going to hold up some symbols here, OK? And I'm going to visualise one of these symbols now. All right? Is it the cross? Is it... I thought that was cookie. OK. Uh, is it the square? <laughs> or is it the whale? Is it... Could it be this? OK. I have written it down... <laughs> I have written it down on a piece of paper, OK? And everybody in the audience here, I'm going to transmit it to you. But more than that, I'm going to transmit it to you at home. Gary, you're right. Yes, oh, right. good, fine. Just see if you yeah. could look elated. That's OK, right, all right, OK. OK, now, uh, I'm transmitting one of these symbols to you at home now. <laughs> Right, and when you when you ring to enter the competition, leave that. Okay, or I'll tell you at the end. And the, you all at home? Oh, no, you're here. You here? <laughs> you here? Right. Later on, I'm going to transmit it, and I'm going to ask you what it was. Okay, so uh, think about that. Good. On we go. Now, how many of you are bored with your present hobbies and pastimes? How many of you would like to do something completely different? Walk this way. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a gentleman who, for a living, 
drives a truck. He's never appeared on television before. Uh, a lot of people are very uh, reticent about coming on and talking about being an adult baby. But for Snuggles here, going to the golf club, um, playing rugby or football or things like that, not something that Snuggles does. He dresses up when he has some free time as an adult baby. And this is, you know, I'm, I'm treating this with, with great s sort of sensitivity, I think, Snuggles, basically. How long have you been doing it? Oh, since um, I can first remember about five years old, I um, decided at that time, well, you know, you're very young, aren't you? But um, it, was, it was something that I felt like doing at that time. Um, in, not conscience, consciously sort of um, putting nappies on mm. all things, but, you know, just a pair of, of, like, plastic pants or something. And at that time, that was quite exciting for mm. some unknown reason, you know. And um, from then on, it sort of, like, was in the background, you know. Could I, I mean, I, I can understand, dre well, like, uh, dressing up as a baby, uh, but you're dressing up as a girl baby, is that right, or not? Yeah, it, yeah it, that's it, true, it, yeah. yeah. Is, that's because it's, it's sort of, like, more cute. Yeah. Um, that's the sort of impression that I want to put over. It's sort of like more cute and, you know, I uh -huh. want to look sort of cute and cuddly. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> you, you know. do, and you do. Oh, thank you. Um, do you. Do you have friends who do this? I mean, do you go out yes, with friends or is this something you, you do? Yeah, there are friends. Mm. I have friends um, within like, a certain circle, like Mummy Hazel's sort yes. of circle. We're going, Mummy Hazel is here with us tonight. We're going to talk to her. One of her very rare interviews, I might right. say. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, not other friends, just those. Really? Yeah. So, so are you married or? No, I'm single. No. Do you have uh, people? I mean, do you have a flatmate or somebody you live with? Do they know what you get up to? Um, I think they work? suspect. Pe um, I've got people at work. Some people at work understand. These are um, fellow lorry drivers. And... Yeah, f fellow lorry driver. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody's got something that. Um, they'd rather not talk about. They'd rather not talk about. But I'm yeah. not quite like that. I Is mean, that... I don't think it hurts anybody. Is it a sexual? I mean, is it a sexual deviation? Is no, it? it's not, not at all. No, it hasn't got a great deal with with sex at all. I mean, you know, I'm sort of like the same as any other bloke, mm. sexually. Um, well, hopefully. And um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, no, it's just wanting to sort of like feel warm, um, safe, mm. secure, and going back to certain times when mm. you know you were. Loved Hazel is with us. This is Mummy Hazel over here. Now, Hazel, you run... Uh, well, tell me what you run. I mean... Well, several things. Amongst them, the Hushabye Baby Club, which has brought a lot of lonely people together. Mm. Um, it's also... Um, well, we've, we've made a fair impression, I think, now, on the fetish world. They know that we exist. Yeah. Um, and the main point that we always want to get over is that these people want to come and, want and to give Snuggles a bottle baby. while you're doing this? Yes, because I, I think he's feeling it. It's probably yes. time, and, uh, as you talk to me. Yeah, go on. Feeding time. Yes, yeah. And what is in the, there? Is it it's milk. Oh, good. Yes, 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 nothing yeah. in it, just no. milk. Yes. And he, he enjoys your bottle? Enjoy yes, your bottle? Yes, Good, good, good. Yes. So there's... Is there a sexual connotation with this or For not? some people there is, and other people it's just yeah. a way out of stress. It's I mean, a very good thing for relieving stress. Yeah, I'm sure. You, you, you yourself don't involve yourself with any sort of sexual oh, practice no, with them at all. That's a, so when they come to you, what do you do for them? I mean, what do they let you do? What, what do you do, what do, I do for them? Well, I take them up to my nursery where um, some wonderful furniture's been made by a member yes. of your audience, Ian Schoons. Right. Very big outsized furniture. Mm -hmm. um, the whole room is mostly pink. They mostly like to be girl babies, they like, do they? Yes, yeah. they mostly like yeah. to be girl babies. Um, dress them up as a baby, put them in a nappy on, a dry one. I don't change wet ones. You don't change wet ones? No. Because but do you change dirty ones? No, they're you not don't. allowed to do that. They're not allowed to do that no, in their nappies? not in my house. You can do it in oh. their own if they like, but not in mine. Yeah, OK. No. Um, and then... I no usually... breastfeeding, I suppose. No, no. no right, OK. Like <laughs> <laughs> they often ask for it, Do they really? Do, yes, they Cookie do. Cookie bit. Anyway, in mind, right. <laughs> yeah. I usually spoon-feed them in one of the high chairs. What do you feed them with? If with Baby food. Really? Is that nice, Snuggle? Mm -hmm. this, this is... Uh, I want yeah. to shake a rattle at it now. Formula yeah. food. Yeah. <laughs> don't you? I mean, do you feel silly doing it or not? No, I got so used to it. I don't feel silly at all. Do quite famous people come to you? Mm-hmm. But I can't say any more than that. <laughs> you wouldn't say any more? I wouldn't say no. any more than that. OK. No. I wouldn't like to break a confidence. No, no. I'm still waiting I, for you to turn up. Yeah, well, I haven't, I haven't done yet. But funnily enough, I asked Gary Jacobs if he'd dress up like this at the beginning. And what did you say, Gary? I said I left my gear at home. <laughs> no, 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 you didn't. No way. No, said Gary you know. said absolute... <laughs> sorry, no Hazel. Way. Gary said no way at all. I don't do Absolutely. any sexual fetishes or dress up like this, and I don't dress up as a judge. That's absolutely right. That's and you, right. you don't do that? I don't. I won't dress up as a barrister either. OK. <laughs> funnily enough, we found this photograph <laughs> of Gary Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you like that? It's, it's nice. You could have that. There you are. That's that's for you. Thank okay. You. And I feel if he's going to do that sort of thing, he should come out of the closet. I do too, yeah. James. How do you, finally, Hazel? And that was, do you enjoy that? Yeah, it's nice. I'd just like to say something. Yeah. Um, Listen. Okay. Right. Um, a lot of people perhaps might think that this has got lots lots to do with kiddies and children. That is absolutely. Nothing to do. That they think there might be some sort of paedophilia. That's right, yeah. and that is something that we all would like to get over. That it is a, got nothing to do at all with children or or babies or anything like that, other than me wanting to try and be one. Okay. Lastly, how much does Snuggles have to pay for this sort of thing? Uh, for an overnight stay in the nursery, he would pay because he's a club member. He'd get a reduction. Yeah, He'd only pay eighty pounds a night. And he's got all his own clothes, so he doesn't need to hire any. Yes. And a lot of them are into restraints, but they have to pay extra for that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> fine. And uh, I tried to find out where you come from, and it's very, very... very you're difficult. very, very... So how do people find out about you? Um, I advertise in Forum and yeah. Exchange and Mart and the Fetish Times. Oh, yes, <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Snuggles and... Uh, uh, and, and, and Mummy, well, no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Mummy Hayes, I, Jerry Hayes. Does Jerry go or not? Does he want money? <laughs> yes, he might do. Ladies and gentlemen, Mummy Hazel and Snuggles. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I have to say. I do. I honestly have to say that uh, Snuggles very brave to come on and do that because uh, that's the first on television. That's a bit squeaky, isn't it? What can you say? What? <laughs> Does he suffer from colic? <laughs> do you, if you want to burp him now, Hazel, you carry on and we'll uh, we'll get down to it. <laughs> I slap him on the back. Anyway, oh, so I'm, not to, I'm not supposed to say these you things. You old like. reactionary, you. <laughs> but could you believe that Gary Jacobs doing that? I'm, oh, no, I could I believe could. it actually. Yeah. I could. And Jerry, there you go. Oh, right. Uh, sorry, Michael said something to me. What, what, what was that? Oh, I've been naughty. An another shot of. Oh, a shot of. Uh, very good. Right. Uh, let's get on with um, Disclosure. Disclosure, yeah. An interesting movie. Michael Douglas plays Tom Sanders. He works for a, a microchip computer company in Seattle. Mm. And he's in charge of his department. And along comes Meredith in the shape of Demi Moore, or as she likes to call herself, Demi. Demimo. 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 Have you met her? I have several she times. Like? Well, she's kind of, she's got something. Yeah. She's got something that, there's something about it. She's got a really? presence. I don't know if she can necessarily is the greatest actress in the world, but she's got a, <laughs> no, no, no. She has a presence that the camera likes, <laughs> which, is, which is more than some actresses have. Shall we, before we talk more about it, shall we watch a bit of it? Yeah, are you showing me uh, interesting scene? Well, I, I edited all together earlier myself. I, oh, well, the best uh, bits. It, it must be the, the best bits. Um, but but uh, uh, let's have a look, here it is. No, no. So, so, wait, wait a second. Mm. Nobody has to know. Nobody gets hurt. I can't do this. You can't stop. I'm not going to do this. You can't stop. No. Standers, you have no idea what you're up against, as usual. We'll see. <sighs> this, is, this is the first movie I've seen where a guy sort of gets gets attacked and s sort of sued by a woman for saying no. I mean, he's, he pulls a halt, as it were. But it's all about her actually it, it, being his boss, it's isn't it? It's all about... And, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, some people are saying it's about sexual harassment. It's about power. Mm. Uh, what else it's about? It's about the paranoia of the white American male. You know, a lot of you white dudes are getting very concerned about... No, seriously, <laughs> about where they stand in today's society. <laughs> there was a piece in the papers the other day about sort of American males, particularly white ones, who are suing their female bosses for sexual harassment. They fear a takeover in the, white, in the workplace. It's serious. It's happening. <laughs> I mean, I don't have that problem. Of course, you know, uh, darker-skinned people don't have that problem. We don't You're have sure? any kind of problem. But I look, see. it's a very interesting... OK, woman, you just do what I say. It's a very interesting movie. However, they could have got another leading man, because Michael Douglas is getting a bit long in the two. A bit oh. jowly, don't you think? Yeah, well, it comes to all of us, doesn't but, it? But I mean, it, but, look at you and me, and... Uh... Don't, don't, don't do that. But, <laughs> he's, but, but he's become the very interesting embodiment of, of, of that white, angry male. Does he get his gear off? No, in and fact... Does she get In her fact, gear that's off? one of the steamiest movie sex scenes I've seen in ages, where they all keep their clothes on. 
there's a lot of tongues and fingers and mouths oh, oh. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh. But you don't necessarily see the business. <laughs> you don't. Demi Moore has a presence. I like her. She's a very interesting actress. She <sighs> dares. She dares and wins. Thank you very much indeed, Baz, and we'll see you next week for more. Can I just also say this? You may. Nell with Jodie Foster opens this week. Interesting movie where she plays a sort of, a, what, what do you call them, mentally challenged person. Oh, right. Interesting. She's up for an Oscar. We'll, we'll, we'll look out for that. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Baz Bamming Boy. <laughs> oh, a bit of... A bit of hot gossip for you. A bit of hot gossip for you. Remind me, I won't tell you this week because we were. Remind me, Richard Whiteley, the presenter of Countdown, who uh, said to me, I bumped into him the other day, he said, James, I've got to thank you for your programme. Uh, 40 minutes. And remind me, and I'll tell you next week all about that. Uh, and he'll be furious when he hears that. Right. Now, before we uh, go any further, let's have some more music. Jason is back with a number called Little Girl. <laughs> Dear, tripped over. Thank you very much indeed, Jason and little girl. We should dedicate that, I think, to uh, Snuggles over there as well. I think that's very nice. Now, before the break... Uh... Sorry, did you... Get... Gum? <laughs> you keep giving me chewing gum. I don't know how you can... I can't speak with it. Anyway, right. Uh, Simon, our researcher, as we told you earlier, is ill this week. And uh, he's not able to... He's very contagious. Has he got turkey pox, cocoa pox, 
or chicken pox. You could win a holiday for two people in the Mediterranean or in the Canaries. The choice is yours. All you have to do is call us on 0891 48 49 50 and the lines are open till midnight on Sunday. <laughs> Stop doing that with the camera. Fine, OK. Uh, quick reminder about the holiday competition, because it's getting into summer, spring. We want you to have this. Uh, has Simon got up on the screen, up on the screen, there we are, turkey pox, cocoa pox or chicken pox? 0891 48 49 50. Ring that number any time until midnight on Sunday. And uh, you could be winging your way to the Mediterranean or the Canaries. Da -da 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 Time for a little entertainment on the programme, but as you know, this programme zaps on because I wanted to talk to her about her recent tour of Bosnia. But we'll invite her back next week to do another trip for us and talk to her about it. Then, in the meantime, please would you welcome Britain's only glamour magician, the incredible Lynx! <laughs>
Ah, oh, I wish I had a box like that. Don't you? There was a young... The, our young friend in the front there, when she went to cut off her arm, you nearly passed out. Yeah, it was horrible. You didn't like that at all, did you? It's a rebel! <laughs> right. OK. Exciting. These pictures, by the way, before we carry on, very nice. Our, our guys here, our uh, Joel and uh, Gary, are over here. Gaz, get down off your flipping ladder. I mean, you've painted it. You might as well show everybody. Very nice it is, too. And uh, Joel, this is lovely. Thank, Thank you very much, indeed. Now, uh, where are you, Jerry? Come over here, lean on me plinth for a this few moments. Let's talk about Norman Lamont. No, it? nothing we about Norman Lamont. No, and Norman it's nothing Lamont about bearings at the moment. Nick Herbert, who is the uh, political advisor of the British Field Sports Society, is on the phone. Uh, Nick, how are you? All right, thanks. Good. Uh, you know, we've got Jerry here in the studio. I believe you've done battle with him before. Yeah. So yeah. if he chips in, we'll just we'll shut him up, Nick. You don't have to worry about it. Um, <laughs> the first reading of the bill got through the house uh, to ban hunting with dogs. Um, what do you think? What are you going to do? Is this uh, the end of hunting, Nick, as we know it? Have you got to capitulate now or not? Well, no, because right from the beginning, the promoters uh, said that they couldn't get the bill right the way through. And uh, actually, the bill does two things. And the first, uh, perhaps the most important part, deals with uh, acts of torture to wild animals, about which there was uh, universal support. So you actually, uh, you support that? Yes, yeah, very okay, much so, fine. and that's why yeah. uh, I'm just... mem members of Parliament who support country sports, oh, yeah. uh, which are attacked in later provisions of the bill, nevertheless abstained. And what I hope is that the promoters will recognise that um, the only way that they'll get a bill onto the statute book is to drop the uh, provisions which attack country sports, however strongly they feel about them. But a lot of the MPs just abstained, didn't even bother to turn up and, uh, and show that they were against this bill. I mean, surely that's it now. We're not going to have this, this uh, sort of business carried out anymore. Well, I think it was right for them to abstain, because uh, if they'd voted against the bill, they would have been uh, held to have voted against Clause 1, which, of course, deals with this torture of animals. But was that, and, OK, we, we accept that, but what you're saying then, you think that the, uh, particularly the Tories, I'm sorry to say, uh, will now talk this bill out or whatever they have to do and it'll, it'll not rear its head again? No, I think that um, there is no time for this bill. Uh, barely even any time for debate except in committee. So it's been, oh. it's been a pure publicity stunt uh, from beginning to end? That's right, and the promoters admitted they couldn't get it what through a, from the beginning. Hang on a minute. That's completely untrue. Hang on a minute. That's completely so, untrue. Well, hang on a minute. Nick, so that's a, that's a waste of our parliamentary time, isn't it? I think that it would have been much better if uh, John McFall had introduced a bill about which everybody could agree, but he still got the Jerry. chance to uh, turn the bill into something which everyone... Uh, will agree, and I think that if, if he doesn't do that, it will show that what they're much more concerned about is publicity okay. and actually getting I, an animal welfare. Bill okay, on Nick, the hang, on, hang on just for a minute, Nick, because I've got Jerry here who's uh, going into a form of apoplexy, apoplexy. which is not nice. Apoplexy. So, uh, so what, what Nick there is, is saying is absolute gonna... rubbish. Absolute rubbish. But you're a Tory. Yes. And I voted for this bill, and I want to outlaw hunting for quarry. But apparently you're in, in the you're you're a minority. Oh, oh we do this for publicity, did we? How come we got a vote? Was it 253 to zero? No one had the courage from the pro hunting lobby to vote against this particular. So when does this come for a vote next time, or will it never get another? Vote? It will get a vote in committee. And what these guys want to do, the pro hunting lobby, they want to knock it out in report stage. Well, we're yeah, not going to. Yeah, but Nick thinks that's going to happen. You well, think it's going to no, be out in report stage, happen. Nick? We're not allowed to happen. Nick? Yeah, James, hi. You think it's going to be knocked out in the report stage? Well, I mean, I, what I'm not prepared to do is accept what Jerry's saying about publicity, because, of course, nobody uh, wanted a vote against the bill, and in order to get a oh. vote, uh, his, ha his yeah. side actually had to shout... Um, uh, no, themselves. So no, it was a very no, cynical no. act. Nick, because, Nick uh, doesn't understand. There was, a, there was what's called a closure motion. We didn't actually do that division that you thought was going to happen. OK, so explain for us in, in layman's need terms. We need 100 members right. of Parliament to be there to say, we want the matter put now, are we going to get this bill through? And everyone said yes, and it went through, yeah. actually, on the nod. So, do you think that there will be another stage where this bill will have a rougher ride? Oh, it may have a rough ride, but the people out there are overwhelmingly against hunting and killing for pleasure. OK, Nick, last word with you. Um, I'd like to ask Jerry, since the people are overwhelmingly in favour of hanging, if he's going to uh, vote for that as well. OK, that had nothing to do with it, but thank you very much indeed, Nick, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one letter that I got from... Uh, this, this comes from Paul, who wrote to me from uh, Fairfield, near Bury, up near Manchester, and he says, I've heard it said that if hunting gets banned, there will be horse yards closing down, dogs destroyed, ferriers with less or no work, unemployment, famine, pestilence and so on. 
I understand that there are 12 drag hunts, uh, nothing to do with uh, <laughs> certain Tory MPs, yeah. uh, drag hunts in this country. I have ridden with one. <laughs> The North East Cheshire drag, in my opinion, the drag is safer for the rider. It's the stilettos, you know, and the horse as well as not involving a quarry. The same number of hunt employees are required. Hounds, horses, why is con uh, conversion to drag hunting not uh, recommended? I have no idea. I think he's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, Absolutely. thank you very much indeed. Right, mind your seat. I'm going to pop out. I'm coming in here. Quick, 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 quick. Only two minutes of programme. Go and keep an eye on Jerry, will you? Go on. Off you go. Thank you very much indeed. What? Please. <laughs> Now, every time I look at Cookie, I just wish I brought me skis. <laughs> <laughs> every time Snuggles look, looks at Cookie, he's thinking lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we shouldn't. I'm glad to see you laughing. Anyway, that's yeah. the main thing. I'm glad to see you laughing. Right, we brought Gary in, and uh, the last thing is, uh, he said to me, I could have got him, but we won't uh, talk about that particularly now. You I want to change him? Out. I could have no, got no, him no. off. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I know you want to try and change the law. And you want to be uh, pressing for anonymity on both sides in rape cases. Is this a possibility, do you think? I think so. I mean, the, the, the law used to be anonymity, didn't it? Well, and then it they changed to, it. It used to be that neither party had anonymity. The media made it appalling for the women. For the women, yeah. So therefore they made it um, anonymity for both. Mm -hmm. But because some women were saying, if only I'd known so-and-so was accused, I could have come forward. Yeah. Therefore they made it that the man had to be exposed. Yeah. And the women never exposed, unless she chose to put her own name to the press. A lot of a people have said, though, that if you start doing this, then you you are putting uh, behind closed doors the legal system in this country. That's I'd, I'd actually, actually true, though. I mean, you can. I mean, you can even have a te you can even have a televised court. Uh, you can even televise a rape case without people knowing. I mean, who the parties right. involved yeah. were. You know, all you could do is stand behind a screen. The, the, the point about it is that the, the, the law is meant to be fair. It's meant to be seen to just to both parties, and it simply isn't. So it has to be resolved one way or the other. Either you expose both or you expose neither. But you don't allow... You see, may I just say this? Rape is about ex exercising power over women mm -hmm. by men. Alleging rape, which is not true, is about women exercising power over men. And when you have a man in the public eye, he's the easiest person to pick on. What I don't understand is how he had to go through a trial. I really don't well, understand well, why. Isn't that it our legal system going no, down? But, no, but, no, no, but it's let, not. Let's look at it not. one way. I mean, the CPS now actually have the power to give a, a deeper analysis. They can say to the to the police, "I want you to make further inquiries into this before we proceed." Why didn't they? Well, well, well that this, we don't know. I'll tell you what. I mean, um, two weeks before the trial. Um, uh, the prosecutor, you know, starts looking at it, and uh, and they sent off policemen to go and get other statements about some alleged scratches that w that, uh, that this lady had. The doctor had written that these scratches were no more than a few hours old. Now, what you got to remember is she wasn't examined until Clutching 30 hours yes. after the, the right, incident. Yes, yeah. But they got, went away and got police officers to firm up. Uh, the yeah. fact that they'd seen the scratches. That's eight months later. Yeah. He's, he could we're have been gonna, in custody We'll, we'll be here for a lot longer. We've got to go. Thank you very much indeed to Craig for coming on the programme. Okay. And uh, thank you for watching. We're back That's next right. we'll week. In the time. meantime, have a nice weekend. <laughs> Lastly, if you hadn't been famous, do you think that, that he, it w would have been far easier, that he may well have been given bail if he hadn't been I think if he hadn't have been famous, he could well have had bail at a much earlier stage <laughs> because that is invariably what happens where the people claim to know each other, where it's the so-called date rape syndrome. Bail is granted and the people are kept... Last word with Craig. You've got the media rush as well, you see, and once the media have been rushing about this, they're, they're going to be so reluctant to drop it because the media have made such a fuss about it. Say goodnight yeah, to everybody. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Yeah.